Hello fellow Unreal Engine artists, designers and developers. Today we're talking all about double-sided materials. A few of you in the comments for the uh, Simple Structures plugin have been asking how to do different textures for the insides and outsides of walls. So I'm going to show you two techniques. Uh, one for doing the main spline meshes, walls, doors and windows using a simple modeling tool. And secondly, I'm going to show you how to, if I put the roof on here, I'm going to show you how to generate different textures for your ceilings versus your floors on the generated roof line. And that is a more automated method. So let's jump straight into it. Firstly, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody for supporting the channel. I've just hit the 15,000 subscriber mark. So uh, thank you for supporting this small educational channel on Unreal Engine development. Uh, so on with today's tutorial, we're again using the Simple Structures plugin that you can download for free. Link in the description below. And, um, and again, thank you for people for supporting that. It is free, but uh, some of you have very generously donated some money for the plugin. So thank you for that. And that helps with the continued development. I'm uh, in parallel with doing these tutorials. I'm updating the plugin with new features. So hopefully a, a new version of that will be out soon. So um, on with today's tutorial, uh, we're going to use the Simple Structures plugin. You can see I've created a room here. And I'm going to show you how to do two-sided meshes, well, two-sided materials to be specific, so that for your um, main structure, you can have inside and outside materials, depending where you are in the room. And uh, I'm going to split this tutorial into two parts. The first half, I'm going to show you how to do the main spline meshes, so uh, things like walls, doors, and windows. And it's... Uh, probably easier to do those manually uh, there is a way of automating it um, but it's not straightforward so I'll show you how to do that manually and then we'll move on to the roof and ceiling so having different materials for the floor and the underside which is the ceiling of the floor below and because I generate the roof meshes dynamically I'll show you how to generate the material uh, automatically as well so uh, that's been a long intro. Let's move on and do the manual materials for the spline meshes. So you can see in this example here, we've got, um, uh, if you look to the right here in this particular room, I've got three meshes that I'm using, the wall, UB wall, door and window. So what I want to do is I want to drag these three meshes into my level and then change the material for the inside. So let's just move back slightly. If I browse to the wall structure, what I'm actually going to do is copy these. I don't want to change the originals. So let's go to the wall, um, control and choose the door and the window and drag these. I've created a folder in my main um, project called UB Meshes and I'll copy them there. OK, so now I've got a copy of those three meshes. And let's drag these into the, let's move around here so we can see the front face. And I'm literally just dragging all those three meshes into the level and the window. Okay. And let's start off with the door. So in order to change the material on the uh, backside of the uh, wall mesh, we need to go into modeling mode and this may be different depending on which version of Unreal Engine you're in. I'm in Unreal Engine 5.3. They um, cleaned up the menus a bit in the modeling mode, but you, you should be able to find the same features. If you go down to, um, I believe it's in attributes, you've got this edit materials option. So if you click on that, what we can do now is we can select parts of the mesh to paint new materials on. So if I go around to this side here, you can see that by default, it's selecting by triangles. What I want to do is I want to select this whole back face. So you could do it this way, but a quicker way is to use a selection mode of groups because it uses this, this thing called polygroups to join faces together. And now if I click on it, it selects the whole of that back face. Right, next thing we need to do is we need to add another material to this uh, 
mesh at the moment it just has one material brick wall so in this materials array click on add and we'll add in any other material you want i've got a concrete material here actually let's do let's not do concrete let's do if i do blue this anim sharing blue uh, this sort of luminescent blue uh, so now it's got two materials in the array we need to now change the active material the one we're working with to this new one and i'm sharing blue and the last thing we do make sure you've got the item selected is to do assign active material and you can see that that changes blue to blue okay so let's do, now last thing make, make sure you do accept otherwise those changes won't be written into the mesh and now let's go back to our room here and change our main mesh to in fact we need to give it a better name don't we let's go down here and we'll rename these so I'm using F2 to rename them and I will call them just put I'll just put two S on the end for double sided let's do the same with the other ones while we're here two S and last one two S okay so now we can distinguish those from the originals right now go back to the room and change the main mesh from UB wall to UB wall 2s and you can see that we now have a different texture or rather different material on the inside we have the blue but our door and window meshes are still unchanged so yeah you guessed it it's exactly the same technique for those nice and quick select the door edit materials add the new material into the array i'll do the uh, sorry not concrete what am i using anim sharing blue assign it as the active material and then assign that active material we need to oh, we need to first of all select that face and then assign active material okay that's done and let's accept that and move on to the window edit materials you should be getting the hang of this by now add in a new material and I'm sharing blue make sure that's the active material select the back face assign it and accept and now if we go back to here select our room and change our meshes from the regular door and window to the two-sided door and the two-sided window and there we have meshes that are different on the outside and inside now one thing to be wary of is that whether it's inside or outside depends on the way in which you draw your uh, splines so at the moment they are drawn counterclockwise but if they were drawn a clockwise let me show you by moving this over here you can see that the inside has become the outside so just be aware of that that it does depend the meshes orientation does depend on which way round you draw your splines in which orientation so you might actually use that to your advantage so you can actually quickly have different textures on the outside and inside depending on the way you draw it okay that was the manual method for doing materials and actually you could use that to do more intricate material changes you don't have to have just two materials you could have three you could have uh, materials in different places uh, let's now move on and show you with the roof and ceiling how to do it in an automated fashion all right so this time i'm going to add a roof to my structure so i'm going to toggle the roof here and you can see that in the attributes for the roof we have a roof material at the moment if i go into play mode you can see that this wooden floor is the same on both sides so it's uh, the whole mesh is the same material which is fine for this top level but actually the ceiling face of the mesh i would like to be a different material and you can see here that we've got the material that we can override so let's create a material that automatically has a different texture on the bottom side so to do that let's first of all go into our plugin materials and the master material for all the structures is this MUB structure so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I don't want to change that so we'll make a copy of that into the 
uh, somewhere in the project folder. So I'm going to drag this into this materials folder, copy it. Okay, so here's what we're starting off with, the master material. If I open that up, you can see that it's a very simple material. It's um, just got the diffuse, normal, ambient occlusion, roughness and displacement, and a tiling control. And these are all parameters as well. So when you create your material instance, you can change the textures for those different uh, samples. So let's add in a, another um, we could do it for all three of these, but I'm just going to do it for the color and you'll see that the same approach applies for the normals and the ARD texture as well. So if I create a little bit of extra space, let's move that over a bit and move this up. And if I do control D to duplicate, we're going to create another diffuse or color texture and let's call this diffuse bottom because this is going to be the bottom texture and we'll change it in here just to concrete I mean we'll be able to change this as a parameter anyway so it doesn't really matter so we're using the concrete diffuse here and again we'll plug the tiling in to the UVs here now because you've got a different texture at the bottom here uh, you might want a different tiling control so you could just duplicate this and have a second tiling parameter for your second texture um, now we have to, we need a way of differentiating between when the main texture is applied and when the bottom texture now we want the bottom texture to appear when the face is facing downwards so to do that we're going to use a node called vertex normal and this has um, this outputs a set of values uh, in three dimensions depending on whether you're facing in the x-axis y-axis or z-axis so we only we're only interested in the z-axis the ups up and down so what we'll do is we will do a mask or component mask and we just want the blue channel so r is the x axis g is the y and and b is the z axis so we've masked it on that and the output here will be from one to minus one what we want to do is we want to have a value from zero to one that we can use to interpolate between these two so if you drag out here and do a lerp node and then plug the other one into the bottom we then can plug this in we, well we first need to get it from minus one to one to zero to one so to do that you use a saturate node that clamps the values between zero and one and then plug it into the alpha which dictates the mask between these two elements and finally replace the base color from that output now if we move to change this to a cube here it's easier to see what's happened so you can see now that we have the concrete on the top however we don't want it on the top we want it on the bottom of the um, mesh here so in order to do that we just need to swap around the minus one to one to one to minus one so in between these two nodes here just do a multiply by minus one not minus ten minus one and then it should be at the bottom it's actually difficult to see because it's a bit dark at the bottom so i'm just going to temporarily change it to unlit mode yeah and now you can see when you go onto the bottom that's where the different texture is so in order to make this complete you would copy this lerp node down here and have two normals for your normal and your bottom normal same thing for the ard so you would do that but for the um, speed and convenience I'm just going to do this one to show you so let's save that and what we need to do next is we need to create a material instance so from this new one here this new structure in fact we should rename this we should rename it to UB structure to I'm going to call it 2SZ for two sided on the Z axis and then we will create a new material instance. I'm right clicking, create material instance. 
and I'm going to call it MI uh, wood floor to SZ. Let's open it up and you can see that there are parameters we can change. So the default ones are the ones we want at the moment, but we could override any of these and re reuse this material for different material instances, even changing the tiling. So I don't need to change anything here. Let's just save it. And at the moment, if I go into the doorway here and look up, you can see that it is still the original material. But if I go into my roof parameters and I change the MI wood floor to MI wood floor to SZ, that instantly changes. So if I go up here, I've still got the wooden floor on the bottom, but I now have the new texture on the bottom. And if I go into play mode, so it's a bit easier to see, you can see that that's concrete. So the normals are still the original planks, but I could go into the material and make the normals and the ambient occlusion, roughness and displacement lerp as well by the Z plane. But as you can see, it's a very simple process. So I hope you found today's tutorial useful. Don't forget to stay subscribed for future tutorials and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.